And we as a people will get to the promised land. We strike away the last major shackle. Deep in the hill country of central Texas lies the city of San Marcos, 29 miles southwest of Austin and 47 miles northeast of San Antonio. It's a place known for its lush greenery and bubbling rivers running throughout the city. Around 1851, San Marcos became a thriving location for local agricultural products, cattle and cotton, helping to grow San Marcos as a center for commerce and transportation after the arrival of railroads in the early 1880s. The town center, referred to locally as the square, was laid out in 1851. The Hayes County Courthouse, which sits in the center, was built in 1908. The downtown area surrounding the courthouse is home to many of the city's bars, restaurants, boutiques, and music venues, making it a top entertainment destination. Southwest Texas State Normal School was built in San Marcos in 1901. During the first 40 years of the school's history, the campus was expanded to accommodate 18 buildings around the original Old Main Building. In 2003, after many name changes over the years, the campus had developed into an important regional institution and changed its final name to Texas State University. Texas State University's most notable alumnus is U.S. President Lyndon B. Johnson. Johnson attended the university from 1927 until 1930 when he earned his Bachelor of Science degree. As of the 2012 elections, Johnson remains the only U.S. President who graduated from a university in the state of Texas. On January 18, 1964, Lyndon B. Johnson and Martin Luther King met in the Oval Office to discuss and work together toward a civil rights agreement. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was signed into law by LBJ on July 2nd of that same year, outlawing major forms of discrimination against racial, ethnic, national, and religious minorities and women. It ended the unequal voting qualifications and requirements, racial segregation in schools, workplaces, and public spaces. The intersection of LBJ Drive and MLK Drive in San Marcos is thought to be the only place in the nation where streets named after both men meet. After years of planning, the city of San Marcos and the San Marcos Arts Commission broke ground in January 2013 on a commemorative sculpture that will sit at the intersection. The sculpture will depict Johnson and King meeting in the Oval Office. You go back to um, um, the Juneteenth, um, um, which is uh, a celebration for all colors, um, in, in not only in San Marcos, but the uh, whole United States. It's, uh, it's a day of freedom and of uh, barbecuing and uh, celebrating music in, in the churches, um, uh, making everybody feel to where that, uh, uh, you know, hey, June is a, is a growing season for watermelons and uh, um, ice cream and barbecue and family, uh, family reunions that happen within that month, uh, birthdays. Uh, it's, a, it's a big his, uh, historical uh, monument um, to, um, um, amongst all of the, the people in the United States. You don't only look at the, the month of June 19th, but you look at the whole month of June. We've got um, friends and families that say, oh, my birthday is uh, June 15th. My birthday is June 16th. My birthday is June 18th. My birthday's on June 19th, and that's a that's an eye opener to 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 people to feel to where that um, wow that's uh, that's a day of uh, freedom, June 19th. 
Uh, it really uh, puts a teardropper uh, in a lot of people's, and they kind of come out and they celebrate, and uh, it's, it's great. It's great. When we first met, as we got together as a Crossroads Memorial group, uh, project group, committee, uh, we did a brainstorm on what do we want out of this project and the ideas that came about were a place that honors the community because the, the intersection is a crossroads to the Hispanic community in San Marcos, the African American community. It also leads into the downtown area as well as an area that could be passenger rail at some point. And we wanted a design that complemented and honored all of those things. Also a place of rest and reflection. Uh, and if you've seen that intersection, that's quite a challenge uh, to make, make a place look restful uh, on the asphalt there. I have this wonderful image of Harvey Miller's with his three children at the library, each of them on a different computer, and he's walking back and forth, and they're looking all over the country, in every state, in every city, trying to find another intersection because he wants to prove it's the only one. And he, they never did find another intersection like that. One day me and my grandson was in the park together, and this man said, don't I know you? I said, yeah, my name is Harvey Miller, a good looking fella. My grandson said, no, granddad, it's Harvey Miller, ugly fella. I started slapping, but I said, maybe he thinks I'm ugly. So anyway, Harvey Miller. When they named this Martin Luther King Street and LBJ Street and they ran together, I went to the city and asked them to put a, a statue up there with MLK and, and, and LBJ shaking hands. And they said, why? And I said, because during the Civil Rights Movement, they were good friends and here these streets running together. And that's right, and I ran into, I, I done, I done a, a survey on that. And people were saying, what are you talking about, Mr. Miller? And you know, and I'd call cities and I'd, give, I'd get maps. And I look on it and see if it say LBJ and MLK. And then I'd look at the map and see if they run together and all that kind of stuff, yeah. So I done a big survey on that one year. Other cities and things have LBJ streets and MLK, but we have it that meet at the crossroads. When you go down Martin Luther King and then you go up LBJ and they meet. And that's where the city and the county uh, got together and I've got pictures where the mayor and all of them signed the deeds. They turned the deeds over to us. For that corner, you see that sign down there at LBJ and MLK? And they gave that corner to us. And so that's the reason we're gonna have the monument put there. And, and you know, that's gonna be special on that corner. And it, it really is, and we hope that they'll have enough room where they can put some benches or something out there for people to go and sit. Y'all have seen that. Where they gonna be out there talking? I, I, I think that it's, it's fitting that, 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 that we, that we uh, uh, commemorate and we honor those people because they're great, great. Uh, Patriots. Martin Luther King movement civil rights is not, it's not only for blacks, it's for everybody. So that we were involved with that, we, that motivated us to, to try to lift ourselves from, from the chains where we were held back. Uh, uh, I think Martin Luther has a saying that uh, an injustice, any an injustice in one place is, uh, is, is, is uh, an injustice everywhere, something like that. I've, I've forgotten the exact words, but that's that. Uh, uh, yes, I we that that creates some motivation, obviously. Yes, among the the minorities here to give a feel of the majesty of almost of the White House, for example, the, the columns the sort of structure mm -hmm. aspect of, of government. At the same time, he wanted to, to represent the people and the process. So the photo that we've been using all along and that he put into the design 
is one in which they're talking. They're leaning forward and they're talking to each other. And it's that communication between them that really panned out ultimately to mm -hmm. make the legislation, which are like the pillars, mm -hmm. take place. And the, it being in a semicircle where you could enter it, it is a symbol really of this is everybody's space um, and we welcome everybody to come into it. And it's small, relatively small. It's not like the Washington Memorial or the Lincoln Memorial, but we're a small town and that's a relatively small space and it fits the space I think really nicely.